Good morning. My name is Brittany Liscord, and I'm an educator at the Children's Museum and Theater of Maine. Thank you so much for joining me from your house as the museum and theater is closed right now. I am joining you from my house. And all this program and all of our programs can be found at www.kitetales.org slash online. So today on Friday is our fourth day of Catapult Friday, where we are exploring catapults. And catapults are basically just a machine that launches a projectile. And we will talk more about force um, as we explore a catapult this morning, but a quick reminder, we always want to engineer with empathy. That means that we're gonna use soft and silly projectiles like cotton balls or pom-poms, and we always wanna direct force away from people. That way we don't hurt anyone and our designs are fun for everyone. So remember, engineer with empathy as we go about our creating today. So today, um, we've, we're gonna pick up where we left off with our catapult designs. Each, each day that we've um, looked at catapults, we've explored a different part of design theory. So we've asked questions, and brainstormed, we've imagined. And last week we created and we tested. We used our measurement to see how far our projectors could go. We measured with inches with this nice measuring tape and we even measured with this nice inchworm. So check out last week's episode for some fun ideas for math. Um, that's a fun thing about designing catapults. It's great for all ages and you can explore science and physics and engineering and math as we measure. Today, we add an artistic component to what we are doing and we're gonna do some splatter art as well. Um, so definitely tune in, take a look, and then hopefully this video um, and some ideas will inspire you or catapult your own imagination. So when we design these catapults, we really use things that are just lying around your house. So hopefully you can find some long sticks to make a catapult. Maybe you've got some chopsticks at home or straws or things like pencils. And then you need something maybe bendy like plastic that bends or rubber bands that bend. So these are the materials you're gonna see here today, um, but pretty much we use things that we just have right around the house. And the art component of what we do includes everyday materials as well. Um, so quick reminder, when you're building a catapult, you just need three simple parts to what you're doing. Here's our very basic catapult design. You need your arm. This is gonna be what whoop, flies out, projects. You're gonna need your basket which holds your projectile, and you're gonna need your frame, something that holds the catapult together. So I designed this one that I keep showing here with this lovely little bendy spoon. And I designed this, oh, it's kind of like a pyramid. It's got a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle. And I have this arm and a basket right here. And I thought this catapult was gonna be far, was gonna project much farther than this one because it's bigger. Turns out it didn't. So I'm gonna play around with revising this catapult today and we can see if we can project some splatter art. What should we use for some splatter art? Well, I didn't quite think I should splatter paint my house. So I thought we could just use some water. What do you think? Should we try it out and see? All right, I'm gonna try it with this catapult first. Do some splatter, some water splatter art. And it's such a perfect warm day out. This could be a wonderful way to experiment with some force and energy and have a little silly summer fun as we get ready. So I'm gonna bring you down just so you can see as we begin to do some, whoop, sorry about that, catapult splatter art. Technical difficulties here. Here we go. All right, 
light just so you can see a little better. Perfect. So now you can see our what we're going to be launching towards. So I'm going to push my catapult out here. Perfect. So I'm just going to fill my spoon. I'm going to push it down. And remember, we're dealing with two types of energy. So when we've got our spoon pulled back like this, that's potential energy. That spoon has the potential to boop, pop up just like that. So we've got our potential energy. And once it pops up, that's kinetic energy, when energy is in motion. So I'm going to pour some water right into my spoon. Here it goes. Ready to see what happens? Ready? Let's count down. Three, two, one. Woo! Ah! Do you see that? It went everywhere. Great. Let's try the next one. So we've got this catapult. We'll bring it right up. Here's my long arm with my bucket. I'm going to pull back my bucket and my arm. Pour some water in. Okay, my cap is full of water. You see that? And now I'm going to release it. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, oh. Hey, that was kind of cool. Look what happened. I think my frame needs a little better support. And I'm also wondering if I can find a way to attach my arm to the bottom. So what if, I'm going to ask a question here, I attach another rubber band to this part of the catapult and then tape these together a little firmer. Sometimes we have to go back and make repairs to things we make so that they work a little better. You ever had to do that before? Make, you know, change things as you make them. So I'm just going to use a little tape. I'm going to wrap it right around. And this is revising. So sometimes when we make things the first time, we have an idea of how they should look and how they should work. And sometimes things don't look or work exactly like what we want them to. And that can be frustrating sometimes. And that's okay. We can then start to ask questions and say, gee, how could we get this to stay a little tighter? Can we add some more tape? Let's do that. Let's add some more tape. Can we secure the arm by adding a rubber band down here? Let's see. Let's see how that works. I'm going to put my, hmm. And sometimes it's, this is a fun project to work on with your whole family. So if you're practicing how to do things like tie knots or wind things around, your family can help. So I'm going to wind this rubber band around twice. Oh, it's a little tricky. I'm trying. How does that look? Hey, look, now I connected oh, my arm. Did that work? To my catapult. And then I can connect my arm up here too, just by pulling the rubber band around. That looks a little, it still slips a little bit. I'm gonna have to play around with it and see how to make it work. Should we try the splatter art one more time? Okay. I'm gonna set up my catapult again. I've revised it, made some changes. The arm seems pretty bouncy. You see that? It's got a good little bounce to it. That's good, that means I can store up some potential energy. I'm gonna ask some more questions. Like, I wonder what would happen if we added another rubber band. I don't know, let's just try. We're revising today. We can try anything. Ooh, it's harder to pull down. Oh, that had seemed to have a lot of force, a lot of energy. Okay, it's time to try it out. It's time to do some testing. The design phases, even though we're focusing on one each, each Friday, they all weave together and oftentimes happen in and around each other. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do some splatter art with our catapult. Three, I better move my glass of water here. Do you see? Three, two, one. Whoa! That was great. Well, I, oh, I lost my cap. Here it is. <laughs> I'll have to make sure to attach that securely. Well, I wonder what type of splatter art you can create today. Can you go outside with a spoon and do some splatter art 
all you need is a flat surface. Maybe it's wood, maybe it's pavement or cement, even water, and you can create some fun splatters uh, today and celebrate this warm summer day. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me for Catapult Friday today. I, again, hope this catapults your imaginations for some physics and STEM discovery uh, and lots of fun. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a wonderful and playful day.